Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, welcome to lecture uh, 69. So, we have started with the reference frame which is uh, which is required for carrying out the orbit determination. So, in that context we were looking at various inertial reference frame which are avail available currently and uh, out of that we have uh, and those we have termed as the international celestial reference frame then FK5 and uh, of course, our uh, the Mm, the other one the dynamical reference frame. So, dynamical reference frame as we look into the previous lecture. So, here uh, this you can uh, the dynamic there are uh, if you look in the literature or in the books so in the books only the FK 5 and the ICRS this will be mentioned. Dynamical reference frame is also there. So, uh, and this is purely based on the dynamics. Okay. So, we can call this as the earth mean equator of 2000. This is also written as EME 2000 or you can write as, as J2000, but this will be much better to write this as earth mean equator of 2000. Okay. So, this serves as a uh, one of the reference frame and FK5 is another. So, FK5 also in this the J2000 is defined, defined means at the January 2000, first January 2000 at 12 pm. Now, I will show why they are different, Okay, which the only some journal papers they mention about that in the, but in the book I have not seen uh, this to be mentioned. Say so if I say that uh, this is my international celestial reference frame and this will be defined as the pole, pole of this, this is a x, y and z. So, if I write here the pole of ICRF okay, or the pole of the ICRS whatever you want to write because in that we are trying to realize it. Then the pole of the FK 5 it is shifted like this pole of FK 5. And this distance is 19.9 milli arc second. These are angular distance, okay, 9.1 milli arc second. This is 6 hour and this is 0 hour. So, looking from the top, so in this direction parallel to this you can term this as the 0 hour. So, in this direction this will be 6 hour and so on. So, total 24 hours that will make. Okay. And uh, the J2000 or the EMA2000 what we call is a pole of J2000, it is located here. And this distance is 17.2 milli arc second and this one is 5.1 milli arc second. So, you can see that the pole of FK5 and pole of J2000 and the pole of ICRS they are not the same. So, that means they are not the same reference frame, but the ICRS has been constructed using the causers and the galactic nuclei in such a way that it lies as close as possible to the PJ2000 and PFK5, the pole of FK5 and pole of J2000 as close as possible because there should be continuity arbitrarily we cannot do. So, whatever the measurements were earlier done, so earlier this was defined, so on that the FK5 was defined. So, in this thousands of stars we are added based on stars. So, for a, from that then this is fixed 
and PJ2000, this is uh, oh, of course, it says the dynamical one and we can also write in terms of EME2000, that's mean equator of 2000. Okay. Now, if we look the same thing, So, just below this, if we write the origin of OCRS, uh, origin of the ICRS, International Celestial Reference System. Origin of ICRS. So, the origin of that means this point on the sphere, we will call this as the origin. origin. This is called the origin of right extension and in short, we just call it origin. Origin of right extension. In short, only I will be using this as the origin. So, here the origin of the ICRS is located. Okay. Then, at a distance of 22. 9 milli arc second, your Fk origin of Fk5 is located, Fk5. So, that means the, that one is another reference frame. Okay. So, the inclination, the pole is different and also the origin is different. Okay. They are not the same. So, you can see the changes and similarly, we will have the EME or gamma J2000. Okay, which belongs to PJ2000. Uh, we will not write P because P stands for the pole. So, the, this is only written as the J2000. So, this is your referring to the vernal equinox. Okay. So, all these frames are quite close to each other, this 99 point milli arc second. So, 1 milli, 1 arc second, this equal to 1 by 3600. So, 1 arc second is nothing but and let us write this so 1 arc minute is 1 by 60. So, this is 1 degree divided by 60. Okay. So, like this. So, 1 arc second is written like this. This is this much of degree. And one arc minute if you, uh, one arc minute and here we will replace this with and one arc second is symbol is given like this. One arc minute is given symbol like this. So, one degree divided by 60 that gives you one minute okay. just like in the needle of a uh, watch it is a moving. So, it is a uh, 60, it is a divided into 60 degrees. So, 1 minute you get 60 seconds, the same way it is defined. So, 1 arc second, 1 minute divided by 3600. 3, okay. So, 1 milli arc second will be 1 divided by 3600 and milli means, so this is 1 milli arc second. So, this is a very small quantity. So, you can see for all practical purpose, you can assume them to be uh, coinciding. But ICRS is a difference convention and uh, for uh, converting the coordinates from the inertial to non-inertial frame, they have their own convention. So, ICRS convention, it is a different little and also based on the non-rotating origin, the latest one, non-rotating if I get time, so I will go into this, otherwise I will supply you with the materials. So, here the precision and nutation involved, uh, the latest theory it is being written as IAU 2000 and 2000A. These are the two models available 
where the presses and nutrients have been combined together. And what we will do here, it's a, uh, in this frame or either in this frame, we will assume them to be the same. So, in that we will assume precision and nutrition to be two separate phenomena and uh, we will model them and finally, we will transfer from the celestial reference frame to the terrestrial reference frame. And what the terrestrial reference frame is, uh, will that also will come to know across time. So, terrestrial reference frame is a frame fixed to the earth, but uh, there are certain definition for that and it is rotating along with the earth. Okay. But the inertial frames, they are non-rotating, non-accelerating. Inertial implies it is a non-rotating, non-accelerating. So, this way we see that these uh, frames are different, but for practical purpose, they appear to be the same. Okay. But for precise modeling, very, very precise modeling, you require to differentiate between all these three. And in your, in your conversion, you should be consistent. You cannot do that. You have taken something in uh, the PJ 2000 and then in the and gone to the terrestrial and from terrestrial again converting. So, there you have either taken FK5 or ICRS. So, that way the things will be wrong then. Okay, so, for, so, in the reference frame, uh, already I have listed that one is dynamically defined, another one it is uh, non-dynamically defined. So, we have uh, two types. This is uh, what we have discussed earlier in the last lecture. Here, the types of astronomical reference, reference frame, how they are fixed. And now, based on the type, we can write it, two types of astronomical reference frame. One is defined kinematically, which already I have told, and another one defined dynamically. So, dynamically non-rotating, this is pseudo inertial, because you have taken a snapshot of that and then working with this. And kinematically non-rotating, this comes from the fact that you have chosen the judicial points such that they are not showing on the in the celestial background they are not showing any motion. So, this is based on this is based on the assumption visible universe does not rotate. So, in the visible universe what we are doing here, we are using the quasars. whose apparent motion at a distance greater than 100 mega parsec as earlier I have told you. Is a smaller than 0 0.7 milli arc second per year 
or even less. While in the dynamically one, as I have told that this is based on the motion of this solar system. So, you have to write the equation of motion of the solar system and in that we, we find the fiducial points where the center of the center of mass of the system this does not move the uh, this we have written as v center of mass so uh, r times r center of mass m times r center of mass so uh, if we remember let me write a phrase if we recall so earlier while integrating the equation of motion for the multi body system or whatever uh, we have got that v center of mass this can be written as summation v i times m i divided by m Okay, where m is the total mass or uh, another way uh, actually uh, there we have used another notation we have written that r center of mass is written as a t plus b this notation we have used where the center of mass either moves with constant velocity if a is non-zero if we differentiate it so we get this as a so if a is non-zero so, it moves with a constant velocity if a is 0. So, uh, this is at rest. So, uh, center of mass of the system remains at rest or either moves with a uniform velocity. Therefore, that serves as the center of the triad and the direction we are getting by the ecliptic and equator it is a intersection of that. So, this way we are fixing this triad and beside this the uh, perturbation from the planets it uh, makes the ecliptic change. E ecliptic is nothing but the orbit of the earth around the sun. So, that gets perturbed because of the presence of other planets. Moreover, equator of the earth also that gets perturbed as we will discuss in on the next page. So, these are some of the important points we should keep in mind while uh, working with uh, all these things and uh, one book I will uh, refer you to uh, or book or it is a uh, IERS report of 2003. This is called the international International Earth Rotation System. So this pub this published in 2003, uh, one report. So at that time, uh, I worked on worked in this area. So uh, I am aware of. So this uh, 2003 uh, report, if you pick up. So, you will see and later on also the reports have been published and uh, one uh, report comes in in 2007 or 8 uh, another report it comes by the name the SOFA. Okay. So, this gives you all the um, this uh, programs. Okay. It is a programs for converting from one frame to other frame taking into account the crust motion and various other things are there. So, it is a uh, those programs can be directly taken and you can integrate in your main program uh, with suitable modification. Okay, so, uh, now we go into uh, because we are discussing about the uh, our uh, frames. So, and we are already aware of that in the case of say if, uh, the sun is there earlier also I have mentioned and here the earth is moving around this and earth is bulged like this. So, because of this and this is also inclined on the axis. 
let us say inclined like this. So, if this is ecliptic as mentioned earlier and uh, the equator is here in this direction and it is a bulged, the earth is bulged and say the sun is here in this direction somewhere here the sun is lying. So, because of this the more force will act on this one and lesser force will act on this lobe. Okay. If we separate out these two lobes, so more force will act on this say this is F 1 and this is F 2. So, F 1 will be greater than F 2 and because of this and this you will find uh, in uh, a good discussion of this in my lectures on the satellite attitude dynamics. So, because of this it causes the earth to process about the a process in a circle. So, that I am going to show in on another page okay. and that motion we call as the precession motion so, and beside this the uh, nutation is also involved. So, there are the precession and the nutation motion involved which we need to discuss to understand this and we will discuss it briefly not in very uh, at a very large length. Okay. Sun is located here, okay, earth is here, it is inclined and this is the mean equator shown here and this is the celestial pole and this is the ecliptic pole means perpendicular to the this ecliptic which is the orbit of the earth around the sun. Okay. So, this orbit of the sun this also uh, orbit of the earth this also gets perturbed. due to planets. Sun earth uh, it this constitute two body system and the other bodies which are present Jupiter, Saturn, Mars. So, uh, and in mid between you have two planets. So, uh, this you can take as uh, the perturbing body. So, therefore, the orbit of the earth also gets perturbed that means the ecliptic plane also gets perturbed besides because of the attraction of the sun. Okay. So, if you look at the earth here in this point. So, as I was mentioning on this part there will be more force and on this part there will be less force. Okay. So, this causes the celestial pole to precess which we are I am going to write little bit so that uh, it is easy for you to re refer to and later on I will supply the materials. So, gravitational force of planets affect the orbit of earth around this sun. which we term as 
planetary precession. So, that means the orbit of the earth is getting perturbed means the ecliptic is getting perturbed. This leads to slow secular already in the uh, general perturbation theory we have discussed all these issues how does uh, what does mean by secular it's a, which varies with time and uh, this is not periodic okay. so this leads to slow secular ecliptic plane orientation. As a result, equinox regresses means moves westward moves westward Westward at a rate of zero point zero zero three three degree per century. It's a very small at a rate of zero zero three zero since uh, degree per century, and the obliquity, which we write as the epsilon. So this is a ecliptic and this is your epsilon, this is equator. Of the per century. So, this is one motion involved So, because of this you will see that this angle is changing and also on the equator this right now this is gamma. So, later on the gamma will come to this place later on this will come to this place. Okay, so, this will move westward this is the west movement west movement. In addition sun and moon It is a gravitational force act on the earth bulge and so it is acting on these are the two things one if we divide it into two half the earth. So, this is one part one part force is acting here and uh, if this is near to the sun you will have more force on this and on this there will be lesser force. So, as a result force is here more and here in the less in this direction. So, you will have a torque and uh, because the earth is rotating on the, its axis the spin is a spinning. So, a, a spinning body if a torque is applied on this. So, it processes okay, and it is a very easy to uh, mathematics is not very complicated if you look into this satellite attitude dynamics and control course. So, there you will find all these details. So, in addition sun and moon's gravitational force act on the earth bulge to produce 
produce precession of and this is termed as Luni solar precession. So, that means, if this is the ecliptic and the earth we show like this, this is the equator. In this direction, we have pole of ecliptic and uh, along in this direction the celestial pole okay. so this celestial pole then this will go in a circle around this and this motion this is called the precession motion it goes here uh, in this direction it regresses ok it is a westward it goes also here this way as shown by arrow luni solar precession so this is the major part beside this your ecliptic is also getting a affected this is also rotating ok it is a causing the uh, sometimes back we have looked into this uh, that uh, in the general orbit perturbation theory how the orbit of the satellite it gets affected so similarly the earth is satellite of sun so it, its orbit also gets affected and that we call as the perturbation of the lunisolar perturbation which I have shown here. Okay. So, this uh, so earth is spinning axis traces a circle around the ecliptic pole see if this is not the ecliptic pole, but parallel to the ecliptic pole this is the ecliptic and it is a center will be here and earth is here ok it is inclined like this this is the pole. So, it will be processing like this about this not about the ecliptic pole. So, wherever I have written ecliptic pole do not take it literally to be the ecliptic pole. Okay, so, this is the rotation is taking place like this so, I do not see written anywhere right now. So, the precession of spinning axis of the this is term as the lunisolar precession. So, if, uh, earth axis traces a circle around the uh, it is a better not to write it traces a circle and uh, at the rate Zero point zero one three eight four six degree per year. So one we have the lunisolar solar precession and another perturbation is coming from the other planets, which causes not only the ecliptic to move, but also it will affect. So, mainly the orbit is getting affected because of the other planets okay. and sun and moon they are causing this to get affected. In addition moon also produces 
torque. So, in addition, we will come to final conclusion. So, maybe we will continue in the next lecture. Uh, uh, thank you very much.